right, time for my final guest of the day. In 2001, the stage musical Closer to Heaven arrived in London's West End. It was narrated by retired rock icon and actress Billy Trix, as portrayed by Frances Barber. This summer, Billy Trix is back in a new show called Music, once again starring Frances Barber. The book by Jonathan Harvey and new music by Pet Shop Boys. And as luck would have it, Frances, Jonathan and Neil Tennant are next after one of the original songs written for Closer to Heaven. We interrupt our gossip to... Uh, <laughs> that was Frances Barber, of course, uh, singing Friendly Fire, uh, which introduces my guests, Frances Barber, Jonathan Harvey and Neil Tennant. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 <gasps> together again. The gang's all back. Yeah, <laughs> we got the band back here. together. <laughs> so... Uh, I was I was describing uh, before you came in about Close to Heaven being in the West End of 2001 so that frightening me is 18 years ago uh, how did you come back together again how did you all decide to, who who made the first move well we we went to see um, uh, Jonathan Harvey uh, Jonathan Harvey viewers uh, uh, listeners <laughs> we went to see a production of Close to Heaven at the Union Theatre about three or four years ago <laughs> the three of us and Chris and um and we we really enjoyed it. We were sort of wetting ourselves with laughter because the Union Theatre was so small. It was like someone doing it in your living room. <laughs> yeah. And we just thought we loved the character Billy Tricks. Francis was so good at playing her that what, wouldn't it be great to get to get back together and see where she was now? I think they, they, so. It came out of seeing it again and just remembering what a laugh we'd had together. I yes, think. but then you know, but then you have to all take it seriously. You have to kind of blank bits out of diaries and you have to actually yeah. sit down and write songs. So how, who coordinated all that? Who was the driving force? Was that Jonathan Harvey again? I think the driving force was Chris Lowe. Oh. oh. <laughs> he's not here to actually he's, he's here. He's exhausted it's, from his, it. it's his fault. <laughs> yeah. no, uh, Chris has always been, well, we always loved this character. Do you know, the character came out, uh, it's a mm. very strange gestation, because it came out of a dream. I had a dream that Chris and I were recording with David Bowie. <laughs> And he was, and I woke up, and David Bowie in my head was saying, "I'm coming under friendly fire," <laughs> and 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 so I. I never this, have dreams like this. That. Became a song. I wrote it down, and this became this song, "Friendly Fire." And then Jonathan made the there, character off the dark. song, and then and then the character took over the show because it was such yeah. a powerful character. And when the show was over, we did start to think. Why did, why did we just have a show where, she, where Billy Tricks just rants on and sings songs? And so, <laughs> and Francis so, is so amazing at doing it. So, Francis, is it a, is it a one-person piece now? It is, which I always vowed in my life I'd never ever do because it's so lonely. But uh, the Pet Shop Boys have written four new songs. I sing Friendly Fire in it as well to explain how my icon status is now <laughs> going to disappear because I'm living in a phone box. And, um, and there's a disco song. And there's a sort of Lottie Lemper song at the beginning. Lenya. Lenya. Yes. Lenya. <laughs> That's Lottie Lotte Lemper. Lemper. Yeah. Lemper. Lemper. They're all German. Yeah, yeah. Lumpy Lemper. Lumpy Lemper. <laughs> 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 and then there's a, a, a rather sort of touching torch song song at the end where it's, you know, looking toward the future and where we will all be happy and then she drops off in a fit. So she's a combination of all kinds of icons of the past, old rock stars down on her look. And you won't be lonely because you're doing it at uh, the Assembly Rooms in Edinburgh. So, because I know what you mean about that thing being by yourself, but there you go, you leave the theatre and there's just thousands of performers and actors. So, exactly. Yeah. You'll have playmates. Uh, there'll be, uh, yes. there'll be, and Ian McKellen's up there as well who's threatened to come I'm in to, to my show one night, but I'm going to call security. <laughs> <if he does. laughs> the show, we should say, is called Music with a K. Music <laughs> uh, opens on August the 5th in Edinburgh at the Assembly Rooms, and it's there until August 24th. And uh, it has adult themes, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I can tell you. That's all I know. That's the only thing. It's written in red. It's written I, don't, in red. I don't show my body very much. <laughs> it's for grown-ups. Yeah. It's for grown-ups, yes. Don't, don't bring With a children. sense of humour. Yes. And, and have you started rehearsing this yet? or No, we actually... We've got five weeks, so we kind of start this week. Okay. Um, but I've learned all the songs, which is a good start. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. <laughs> but actually, we've been in the studio with Francis recording them, so yes. we ha so we know what they're all meant to sound like. Yes. And we might put out, put them out to tie in with the show, or we might not, I don't know. Um, you could have a car boot outside the back there, Neil. <laughs> I was thinking that, yes. We were asking, yes, can you sell merchandise like you can at a rock gig? But I think maybe you can't. Possibly not, yeah. And is this going to be weird for you, kind of going back to this character 18 years later? I think so. Although is it 18 years later? It is yeah. 18 years yeah. later. But I, I, the no, I mean in terms of the story. Uh, well, the story is that I go through the decades of, of my career. 
Korea. Ah, I see. So that I came over from Germany on a boat and and ended up in Andy Warhol's studio, and he didn't know what to, what to do. He he had no inspiration for painting. So I sing him a song about soup, and then <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> she has an amazing ability to put center, herself at the centre of important things from yes. history. Oh, the yeah. Forrest Gump of song. Yes, yes. 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 she yes. probably stopped the Vietnam War. Yes. So, the Problem. Vietnam War because of her protest songs. Of course, <laughs> of course. And because you did enjoy Closer to Heaven uh, so much, you, have you done the book of any any other musicals? Have you, tr- have you? I did a musical about Dusty last year. Oh, of course you did, yes. Um, and I've, I've got some in the, in the pipeline, as they say, but yeah, just Dusty. And Pet Shop Boys, you you weren't tempted to... I mean, your performances are always quite theatrical anyway, just, but you weren't tempted to do a straight musical again. Um, we, we have one or two ideas, but, you know, since then we did Battleship Attempt in, in Trafalgar Square, which was, you know, silent film yeah. soundtrack, and we've done the ballet, the most incredible oh, thing, yeah. and we did a piece of music at the proms, we wrote Alan Turing. So we've, we've done things outside pop music. If the right idea came, we were asked years ago to do The Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> I know the look—the look you just give me. I, no, I, I think that's quite I, a good idea. I also thought, why didn't we do it? Um, that's really good. I think Elton's doing it now. Um, I, you know, these ideas come along from New York, and everyone says it's great. And, you, and by the time you thought you might do it, it seems to have faded away again. So yes, I don't quite know what happened. They've lost the rights. I've forgotten all about yeah. it till I read it. And suddenly, it was it was being uh, the idea yeah, was I, happening. I've turned down a few things that have been absolutely massive hits, of course, thinking, "Oh, that'll never work." <laughs> Yeah, I'm not bitter. <laughs> no. Um, we should also say the original yeah, yeah, yeah. musical that we were talking about, Closer to Heaven, oh, yeah. it is coming back to London at the Above the Sag Theatre from July the 3rd till August the 31st. Is it? Is, do you know that? Amazing coincidence. Mm, yeah. yeah. I should also say that contains adult themes Ooh, in yeah, red. That's got more adult themes than than the Edinburgh okay, show. So if you're looking for adult themes, <laughs> hurry along. For closer to heaven. <laughs> if you're not so hot on adult themes, music yeah. in Edinburgh. Yeah. Yeah. In the original Closer to Heaven, the dance captain was Louis Spence before he became Louis Spence. Wow, there's some adult yes. themes right there. <laughs> the what entire an adult theme, really. ring was adult <laughs> themes. It was yeah. completely wild. <laughs> and is the idea, you know, music, can, it, is, can, can music live on? Can music live on? Can, uh, will it have a life outside of Edinburgh? Is that the plan? We'd like it to, yeah. It is. We've, we're in discussions to bring it to London okay. um, to a sort of cabaret space in London oh that's a good idea I know it? yeah yes. late night cabaret yeah, yeah. Okay. With, adult, uh, with adult themes <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> some adult themes <laughs> um, right we'll uh, chat to you guys for more after another uh, Billy Tricks track what could you tell us about Run well this was her protest song about the Vietnam War which she She saw the photograph of the girl running with no pom-poms all over her body and she wrote the song in in a moment of history. Here it is. There she goes, boys. Uh, Billy Tricks, Run, Girl, Run, Francis Barber vocal, and Neil Tennant on guitar, we're told. Yeah, yes, yeah, Malcolm, your producer, seemed to have noticed that. Yes. Um, do, you, do you sit at home strumming a, a guitar? <laughs> I do. <laughs> sit at home strumming like my guitar. Uh, like Dylan from the Magic Roundabout. <laughs> People go, oh, God, Neil's got the guitar out. <laughs> I, I, bought, I actually, <laughs> actually bought a new guitar recently because John, I don't not to name drop guitarists, but oh. Johnny Marr said, oh, this is fantastic guitar. It's a song machine. Oh. Uh, it's got effects on it. It's acoustic guitar with, with, <laughs> with EQ effects on it. Anyway, unfortunately, I haven't written a single song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite disappointed. <laughs> but every, I do play it, though, yes. Uh, so uh, that, that is the alternative. Uh, Jonathan Harvey's here. Uh, Francis Palmer's here. Music, with a K, uh, is the show they're talking about. It opens on August 5th at the Seven Rooms in Edinburgh until August 21st. The original musical that we were talking about, Closer to Heaven, returns to Above the Stag Theatre on July 3rd till August 31st. Both contained adult themes, <laughs> one more than the other. See both, see what you say. And we should say, of course, Pet Shop Boys headlining this year's Radio yeah. 2 in Hyde Park Indeed. on Sunday, September the 15th. Yes. Head to our website for details on how to buy ticks. 
There you go. Uh, now, people have been in touch with questions, so let's uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Francis, I used to love Silk. This is from Patrick and Ipswich. Mm. How did you prepare for the role of QC, and why did the series end with so many storylines unresolved? Because it was still popular. People really liked Silk. I know. It's such a shame. It was because the writer, Peter Moffat, who's absolutely brilliant, he felt, because he's he was a barrister and he'd written North Square and he'd written lots of stuff about Silks, I think he wanted to just go in another direction and so he decided that to park it whilst it was still hot we were all a bit disappointed about it because I loved playing it but we did have proper QCs on the set and they would help us exactly know how you know yeah then you could exactly ig- ignore them supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you do it well I'm doing it like I'm this I'm doing it like <laughs> this I know there were a lot of stuff because I kept on putting my hands into my waistcoat yes, pocket yes I remember you doing that and they said they wouldn't do that and I went I don't care because I think it looks nice and I, thought, <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands <laughs> uh, Jonathan many congratulations for writing Gail's monologue in Corridor actually it broke my yes. heart uh, if you could resurrect a character from classic Cory to write for who would you pick and why Simon from Pont- Pontefract oh well I'd probably uh, pick Blanche because I just loved writing for her yes. she, she had the privilege of old age where she could be as rude as she wanted to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, get away with it and uh, are you still enjoying Carnage Street is it endlessly interesting <laughs> no or I hate it, 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 well, it, 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 it <laughs> yeah I am yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah I would say I, yeah th- it's a really nice team I've been doing it 15 years now um Yes, I still get excited when they give me an episode, so I, I always said I'd leave. I mean, I've had time off. They've given me time off to do other things, so I, yeah, every couple of years I'd say, yeah, I'm still enjoying it. And also, presumably, the longer you're there, the more sense of ownership you have over the characters. You do a bit. Uh, I think you, you, it's, it, it has its own challenges because you, you, you sort of run out of ideas sometimes. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's very cyclical, Coronation, because you have a different producer every two or three years, so the, the mood changes and things lift and things ebb away. So it's always... It's always <laughs> things sink. <laughs> <laughs> flat on their face. <laughs> yeah, it's it's never boring. Uh, Neil, Howard from Hackney says uh, that your shows at the Royal Opera House last year were outstanding. How long did you and Chris spend creating the show and how hard is it to capture the scale of it on the small screen? Is this because you're you're doing a... The film's come out of it on DVD. Oh, I think okay. that's what you, maybe some of it. Um, well, we work with various people, you know, with Stuart Price on the music, and S. Devlin designs it, and we have a choreographer called Lynn Page. Um, oh, I know uh, Lynn. You know Lynn. And in fact, I've met she's, Ed as well. She's choreographed you when you were in... Um, yeah, yeah. And me, Jake, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, Casual font. Yeah. And, um, and so we put it together, you know, between about six of us. Um, and it's always fun doing it. We normally have an idea which we reject. Uh, and on this one, we didn't. Ez said, Neil, you've normally rejected one of my ideas by this point. And, um, but, but this one, it went very easily. And I think it's my favourite show we've done because we have musicians who are really great to be with. And the sound was, was sort of bigger. And uh, I don't know, and also bigger in the Royal Opera House. Yeah. Originally, we were going to do a 90 minute dance piece. And I think it was Ez that oh, said, your hips. It was actually it was Lynn, or, or Lynn or Ez said, You don't want to do that. So we were going to do the, dan- we were going to do the dancing. And, um, and we, we decided to play against the venue. So, in other words, it was oh. all banging and lasers. Oh, okay. We weren't yeah. trying to be the Royal Ballet. And it was a great idea. And it was a really, we did it, we did it in uh, two years. And, um, and it also, it's just a great vibe to be there. The people were so nice. All the st- all the people working there just loved this. Yeah. And when you do something like the the Hyde Park Radio Two Hyde Park game, yeah. where you're just you know you're in a lineup, so you can't you know there's only so much. Well, it's a festival. Yeah, so only so much yeah. Pet Shop Boys you can insert. How do you approach a gig like that? Well, you have your production, but you have a touring version of it that you can get on the stage. You normally get forty minutes to uh, change around between groups, and so you just you just have to hope that your people are going <laughs> to get it all working. Uh, and there's obviously so much technology um, has to come in, but um, so it's it's just it's like playing a festival. Uh, Trevor from Coventry wants to know, Francis. I loved you as Madame Kovarian. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, Francis is nodding. In Doctor Who, uh, how much of the wibbly-wobbly time plot did you understand? (laughs) And uh, how many eye patches do you keep? Do people on Doctor Who take it very seriously, or can you laugh at it while you're doing it? Well, I 
The production take it very seriously. I mean, I did keep asking Matt Smith what was going on, and he just said, <laughs> don't worry your little head with that. <laughs> uh, but I feel as if I can come back, because apparently every single villain can regenerate. So I was only really supposed to be in about three episodes, but they liked the, the characters so much, so they wrote me in, and I loved doing it. And Matt was fantastic. I thought he was the perfect doctor in a way, because he could either look, 20 or 200 you know he's got one of those amazing faces hasn't he yeah and yeah. Uh, and i absolutely love doing it and i'd love to go back and i love jodie whittaker i think she's fantastic she is really seamless i thought seamless um oh jonathan this is anna from kendall uh, i have a bone to pick with you okay. oh. each summer for the past few years i've looked forward to spending my holiday with one of your books my favorite being the history of us i've just gone on a well-known book site to buy your next one <laughs> there isn't one why did you get the block? Did you I, get the block? No, I just, you know, it's it's really hard writing novels. And uh, I was making more money out of television than novels. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I sort of, yeah, it was laziness, really. But yeah, I'd have ideas. So I, I sort of said I didn't want to do a... Because you were doing one a one. year. Yeah, I did six I mean, in six crazy. years. That's crazy. So I wanted, yeah, so I wanted to break which, funnily enough, coincided with the publishers not offering me another deal. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that all worked you out, yeah, but it was my <laughs> idea. <laughs> so now I'm quite thrilled. <laughs> uh, but will you go back to it, do you think? If they want. Yeah, if I have an idea, I would, yeah. But at the moment, it's... It it's takes don't write a book if, you've no, if you don't have an idea. Yeah, but it yeah. takes up so much of my time, and I'm being, so, I'm being really creative with coming up with new TV stuff at the moment, I'm really enjoying that. Oh, excellent. Like, and it's less lonely when you do TV. Uh, Neil, um, this is James from Portsmouth, came to see your Alan Turing work at the proms. Uh, fascinating, very moving. What did you discover about him that you didn't know, and might that piece have another life? Well, we just, I, mean, I didn't really know very much about him at all beforehand. Uh, and Chris and I both read this huge biography by Andrew Hodges, who then collaborated with us on the piece. And also, I, w I am the most unscientific person imaginable, and obviously there's a ton of science in the story. Yes. Um, we actually I have been approached by a, a, a European conductor who wants to bring it back with visuals, and so we have a discussion going on about that. Mm, it may live mm. again. It may return. Do uh, you stutter during the show? No, because he did. Yes. Well, no, actually, because the show That's has a, a very good question. The <laughs> show has a narration, but I didn't do it. We got Juliet Stevenson to do it. I can't believe you didn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet Stevenson. <laughs> and she was, and Francis, she Francis was well. very good. I well. bet she was. <laughs> Did she stutter? This, she this year didn't stutter. <laughs> this interview's gone so <laughs> We're going let's, for stop, let's stop it now. Uh, Francis, Jonathan, Neil, thank you so much. Music with a K, it opens on August 5th at, in Edinburgh. at there till the 24th. Closer to Heaven is above the Stag Theatre in London. 3rd to July 3rd to August 31st. Both Canadian adult themes and Pet Shop Boys are Radio 2 in Hyde Park September 15th uh, thank you so much for coming in to see thank us you. Thank, thank you thank you goodbye yes I am bye BBC Radio